Hello, this is Chris Kobe with the League of Women Voters of Portland. You are watching the Video Voters Guide. Along with Metro East Community Media, we are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Ozzy Gonzalez, running for mayor of the city of Portland. Welcome, Ozzy. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate the opportunity to step forward today. And thanks to the League of Women Voters and Metro East for making this possible. I know that we're all adjusting to how to continue to have a democratic process in this time. So figuring out the logistics to get me uh, an opportunity to speak with folks in the city uh, with a safe distance from the comfort of their homes is a, a tremendous benefit. And I am really grateful for everything you all have done to make that possible. I'd love to tell you a little bit about what I'm actually trying to do in this city, but let me just begin by recognizing that I'm uh, an architect by training, an environmental scientist, uh, a father and a husband. So uh, the issues of how we educate our young people today, how we bring opportunities for careers here in the Northwest, how we support small businesses in our region, um, and how we do it in a way that positions us for bringing greater environmental responsibility and social responsibility is something that we need to get right. And I, I have a vested interest in all of those things. I care deeply about our city. I want to see our city achieve that promise of becoming a grown up version of that livable, walkable, clean, inclusive city that we came to be known for. I have a background uh, in a lot of climate action strategies um, at scales much larger than the city of Portland. So what I've brought forward in my policy agenda addresses a very bold vision for how we're going to grapple with sustainability and climate change, but also the, the basic parameters of a functioning city, like congestion, homelessness, housing, and affordability as well as how we prepare young people for the careers in the emerging industries that we have. I have a, a track record of serving the community in the form of my volunteerism and advocacy work as a board member on TriMet, as a board member for the Regional Arts and Culture Council, and I currently serve on the boards of the Hispanic Chamber and the Oregon Association of Minority Entrepreneurs. So uh, I have a broad set of interests, including arts and culture, uh, that um, give me a sense for how many different layers of Portland are experiencing these times. And so I not only have the technical background of climate science or the policy background of what it takes to create policy that benefits society, but I also have the lived experience of what it's like to grow up in a world where English isn't your first language, where the educational systems, the justice systems are not necessarily made to reflect you or serve you. And I think though having that background is very critical at a time when we want leaders that are actually bringing solutions to the city. Ozzy, you mentioned the tumultuous times in which we live. The pandemic and the resulting devastation of small business layoffs and housing displacement will be with us for some time. How would you speak as mayor to address this fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Thank you. I actually have a, a lot of ideas about this. We've had to think about how this time is changing us all. And as someone running for office, I've had to think about how this could change the job of bringing us back out as a functioning city once again. Right now, we have learned a lot about the importance of having bold leadership and having a proactive uh, version of leadership because we see what happens when we don't have that. Um, we're experiencing that right now in a very palpable way. Um, but we also need to understand that we need a version of leadership that looks at this as an opportunity to learn and grow, come out of this much stronger than we were before. There is an immediate vulnerability that we have all experienced right now in the realization that most of our food, our medicine, our emergency supplies come from farther away. And there's a lot out of our control uh, when it comes to making sure those things are coming to our region in a timely fashion. So looking at this, as a way to understand 
in a deeper way, where are our vulnerabilities? What are the critical supplies that come from far away? And how can we make sure that here in our region, as we come back out and bring jobs back and thaw off our economy, that we're doing it in a way that recognizes that producing things that are critical locally is gonna put us in a stronger position when we have to respond to emergencies. So I feel like uh, the 10 years I've spent growing small businesses here locally will be very useful when I have to go outside and help figure out how some of our industries might have to transition from producing furniture to producing emergency supplies and how we can help those businesses transition that skill set to something that helps us in, in a more strategic way. So those are some of the examples. I have a lot of ideas for an economic development strategy that also aligns with how we are addressing climate change. Because the other thing that this experience has revealed to us in a very clear way is that we can no longer say that human beings do not impact the planet. We have seen what happens the moment we stop doing what we're doing. And uh, it's, it's not for nothing that nature is gonna have a, a very different memory of what this moment in time has been for the world. And we're coming back into the city with that full recognition that we're both vulnerable and we are both impactful to the planet. And we have to have that relationship that allows the planet's life support systems to sustain us. Ozzy, we have time for one more question. Are you satisfied with the current structure of Portland city government? And if not, how would you change it? I am not currently satisfied with our structure of government. We need representation. Uh, geographic representation is one of the foundational changes that will shift how our government feels today. I believe that having a city manager is something that will help us ease the uh, pressure of having our city council members have to know the technical aspects of the bureaus that they oversee. If we had district representation and a city manager, we also could move all of the oversight of operations of bureaus to the city manager role. And so city man or, or pardon me, council men and women would not have to uh, manage a bureau for their jurisdiction or for the city at large. They really focus on how all of the services and all of the bureaus of the city are serving the geographic footprint they represent. I think that will create a much better structure for the government and of course, it's not a panacea. We still have to have some good standards for the kind of people we elect. And we want to make sure that hold whoever we elect accountable. Thank you very much, Ozzy, for sharing your thoughts on this. You came to the video voter's guide. Please educate yourself as to the candidates running for not only this office of mayor, but all the candidates and the ballot propositions. And be sure to cast your vote by Tuesday, May 19th. Thank you for watching.